What's up everybody and welcome to today's video. I'm your host Phil and today's video we're going to check out some of the most frequently asked questions around the neural lamp modeler often to simply refer it as NAM. Let's get right into it. In case you might have not recognized, there's a whole sweep throughout the guitar gear industry where it's all things machine learning and capturing your analog signal chain and basically bringing that either into a modeling platform or into the plugin realm. This all started a few months ago with Tonex being released by IQ Multimedia and now has found its newest form by Headrush, which released their Prime Floorboard, which also allows you to do analog capturing. And sneakingly, in the midst of all this, there is also an open source and 100% free solution out there, which is the Neural Amp Modeler by Steve Atkinson, often to refer to simply as NAM. If you scroll a little bit through YouTube on the subject, you might find a plethora of different videos from different content creators out there and everybody showcasing basically either their own profiles or other profiles which are available within the community or showcasing the accuracy of the NAM capturing technology, which is all fine and cool. And I also made one video which has been, by the time of filming this, watched nearly 32,000 times. This is huge for me and I am sincerely grateful for everybody who watched and commented and engaged on this video. Thank you so much. However, I'm also very active on the Neural Lamp Modeler Facebook group and there we often get basically redundantly or repeatedly asked questions. So what I'm trying to do with this video is to basically kind of answer most of the frequently asked questions, kind of give you a guideline on where to look for when you are searching for local training, where to find Google Collab, what it's all about, and so on and so forth. So this video is not going to be anything in regards of showcasing the sounds or something. This is basically purely answering some of the most commonly asked questions. Before we move on with this video, I want to clarify one thing, or rather disclaim one thing. I am not in any shape or form associated officially with NAM. This is a fan-made video. I'm not basically representing the NAM community in any aspect. I'm just an avid fan of the technology and I'm seeing a lot of these questions being asked on the Facebook group, so I just want to help out with this video. And the first question, which kind of already has been answered within the introduction, but still deserves its own chapter is, what is actually NAM and how does it work? The Neural Lamp Modeler, often too simply referred as NAM, is a software which has been released by Steve Atkinson, independent programmer who did this basically as a free time hobby and NAM allows you very similar to the Kemper profiling amplifier, Quad Cortex, Tonex and also now the Headrush Prime, capture your analog chain and bring that basically into a plugin based format for you to use your DAW or in the standalone application. On the subject of how NAM works, NAM basically uses machine learning in order to replicate your analog gear. How that works is at its core, you first reamp a reference audio file through your analog chain through the reamping setup. You record that and then you use so-called training, which basically compares the reference audio file against your re-recorded file. The machine learning then out of this calculates kind of the differences between both the reference signal and your reamp signal and creates out of this calculations a so-called model. This model then can be used within a plugin in a digital audio workstation, such as Reaper, for example, or in the actual standalone application of NAM to run your guitar playing through. And this then basically is your amp simulation or your amp capture. Now, having said all of that, what is the difference about NAM? What makes it special compared against, let's say, the competition out there or the other solutions which are on the market. First off, at this time and for the foreseeable future, NAM is 100% free and open source. The open source component is really cool because this allows other developers to chime in since the code is openly visible in GitHub and that means that other developers can enhance the project together with Steve Atkinson. Also, NAM at its core difference is more accurate than the other solutions out there. And this is rooted in the fact that NAM allows to adjust the number of the machine learning cycles, which are called epochs. And this basically, of course, defines the accuracy. I have mentioned it before in my other video, which I made about NAM, that it seemed from the logs that Tonix only allows in the advanced mode up to 
somewhere around 250 epochs. While with NAM, it is very common that you will find models which have been trained with 750 models or even 1000 models. And in regards of accuracy and basically the testing, I've done that in my first video, which I will link, of course, in the video description below. Now, if you weren't intrigued by the beginning of watching this video about NAM, hopefully you are by now and you're asking yourself, of course, that's all fine, that's all cool, but where can I find the models? Where can I find the other analog captures from other users so I can check them out? And this is one of the core culprits of NAM at this current point in time. There's no centralized repository where we have all the models kind of, let's say, collected. The models mostly can be found within the Facebook community group because that is the fastest growing group out there where you can basically exchange information, where you can exchange files, drop a link there with some profiles, drop a link here with some profiles. And that also bears the problem that you have to kind of scan through all of these posts, find the good ones, sort them out against the bad ones, and so on and so forth. However, there are some serious community efforts in the background to build an awesome platform where models can be uploaded in the future as a centralized unit, which is hopefully then gonna become a standard. I'm talking with those people in the background right now, and I'm gonna, of course, release a video as soon as it's out there. However, enjoy a little bit of a B-roll footage, so to speak, of the platform, what I have seen so far. All right, so now that we have seen this amazing footage from this very cool platform, which I'm very excited about, you still might have the question, I wanna test stuff right now, at this moment, at this minute, where can I find models? I still got you covered. Not only that I have made my own captures, which I already provided in my last video, and I will also link them again in this video description. I have also spoken with some of the most experienced people out there in regards of NAM model creation and also some of the people who made the best NAM models in my opinion and I asked for their consent to post their respective download links in my video description over here and I have done exactly that. Most notably, John Arnold. John Arnold has worked together with Peter Kanoff and they created a plethora of super sought after high gain amplifiers, super sought after cool pedals such as the Electric Eye Mud Killer, you can find it down in the video description below and you'll be in amp heaven. However, I have to disclaim, of course, these links are not provided by me, so I only can guarantee on the long run that my links will stay available. I cannot speak for the other links which I'm providing. All right, next question. Do I need special hardware? So if you're using only basically models which have been provided by other people in the community, then you might get away with only using your audio interface having NAM loaded either as plugin or standalone, loading the NAM model, plug the guitar in to enjoy. Hey guys, it's me quickly stopping by from the future. I'm editing this video currently and it came to my mind that I have forgotten to mention something which is incredibly important when working with NAM and that is that you have to set the correct sample rate. At this current state and time, NAM only works at 48 kilohertz. That means that either within the driver section of let's say your Windows audio driver, for your interface, or at least within the digital audio workstation where you want to use NAM, you have to set the sample rate to 48 kilohertz. Steve is currently working on some other supported sample rates, but until then, we have to stick with uh, 48 kilohertz, super important. A lot of people are reporting some nasty sounds coming out of NAM, and you don't want that to happen to you. And in most cases, it turns out that these folks have set up their sample rate to 44.1 kilohertz instead of 48 kilohertz, and setting the correct sample rate has resolved everything. Just that as a notion, let's move on with the normal video. However, if you want to capture your actual analog signal chain, then I personally highly recommend using dedicated tools because I tried without using them and for me it did not work well. But your mileage may vary, you might get away without using them. First off, when we're looking at the stuff between the audio interface and the amplifier, you should use a reamp box. 
A reamp box is a very easy way to get impedance matching right, and some of them also allow for some level compensation where you can set the level to your likings so that it kind of matches your guitar input into the amplifier. Always make sure that you double check that the levels are correct, that it sounds basically the same as if you would have a guitar straight into the amplifier and then you should be hopefully good to go. I personally use the Palmer De Capo, which I find works wonderfully. There is also a Palmer Trave out there, which is kind of the successor of the Palmer De Capo. It's round about 80 bucks, 90 bucks, somewhere around that mark. Way less expensive than the radial stuff out there and it just works fine for me. Looking at the output side of things, you might not actually get away without dedicated equipment. You need something to load your amplifier, especially when it's a tube amplifier. And for that, you can either use a speaker load capable DI box, which is basically plugged in between the amplifier and the cabinet. This will have the disadvantage that you are hearing the reference audio running through your full setup, which is incredibly loud and incredibly annoying. Or you can use a dedicated load box or if your amp has one and you don't have either a dedicated load box or a speaker load capable DI box, you can try using a preamp out on your amplifier. Or if you don't even have that, you can maybe engage the effects loop of your amplifier and use the effects send kind of as an output, which then goes into your audio interface. At least that way you will get the preamp sound of your amplifier. How do I capture my amplifier? The capturing of the amplifier is basically the reamping part of things. You set up your recording chain for reamping. I like to use Reaper for that. And then you play and record the reference audio file through the reamping chain and boom, off to the next step, which is actually more important, which is the training. How can I train a model? Now this video actually deserves not one, but actually multiple videos on its own. So I'm gonna very shortly pick up on this and then gonna link you further to some videos where this is actually explained more thoroughly than I could do in this video. There are two possibilities to do the training, either online via Google Collab or locally with your own PC hardware. I personally recommend online training for the folks out there who do not have dedicated GPUs for gaming in their PC rig. For this, I also highly recommend to watch Jason Zadora's video on how to train online. He's a true asset to the community and he has a fantastic video which actually allowed me in the first place to train and kind of explore NAM on my own before I then moved on and trained locally and kind of really committed to the NAM community itself. And at this opportunity, thank you Jason and big shout out to you. However, as I said before, I nowadays go rather for the local training, which allows me to use my local GPU over here in my gaming PC to do the machine learning to kind of calculate the NAM models for me. What you have to do for this in a nutshell is first you have to install Anaconda, which is a package distribution software for Python. That's a programming language for scientific computing. You have to also install the CUDA toolkit by NVIDIA. And that is also one limitation. I have not heard of anybody who got this really working on AMD GPUs, but I could be wrong with that one. I just haven't heard of anybody getting that successful to run so far. However, I would say that it's really, really crucial that when you do this, that you actually have a powerful graphics card unit or a powerful MacBook with an M1 chip architecture on board. These are the only situations where I really heard that people had success doing the training and not taking longer than doing it simply online on Google Collab. However, for both the local training and the online training, I'm gonna link some extremely helpful tutorials in the video description below. There you can check out more on this actual subject over here. Off to the next question. Is NAM capable of capturing full rigs properly? Now, this topic is subject of debate. While Steve Atkinson, the developer of NAM, is very shy of claiming that full model capturing is possible with NAM, I have done so with barely any loss in accuracy. The only repercussion I had so far is that I had a slight fizziness in the frequency range above 12 kilohertz. And to be honest, I always treat my guitars by either high shelving or low passing that frequency range away. So everything above nine kilohertz, 10 kilohertz or something, is slightly rounded off so that it leaves room for other elements within a mix. So I couldn't care less about this, let's say, aliasing or fizziness within 12 kilohertz. 
Anyhow, I personally recommend to just go ahead and give it a try, both modeling as well as playing through the full rigs, and be the judge for yourself. You decide, in the end, what sounds good and what not. What about the cabinet sound within that? Now, due to the controversy which I talked about in the talking point before, the full rig capturing, a lot of the models provided by users within the NAM community are only reflecting an amp-only model or a model which consists of an amp and a boost pedal. And this means that you need something which can emulate the sound of a cabinet. This can be achieved with an impulse response or IR in short. This is oversimplified in the Q-curve which matches exactly that of a specific microphone and cabinet combination and by placing that right behind your amplifier only model you get exactly the sound as if you would have that amplifier through the respective microphone cabinet combination the IR is reflecting. IRs are plentiful throughout to be found in the internet both paid and free. I personally really enjoy impulse responses from Celestin Digital, Ogren Digital, York Audio, and there are also amazing other contributors out there. I have made plenty of different tutorials on impulse responses on my channel, and you can find them over here in my video list. In the link to my NAM models, you can also find one impulse response which I have extracted out of the STL Tones tonality plugin from Josh Middleton, and I actually have the allowance of the fine folks of STL Tones to basically share this publicly. Shout out to the people from STL Tones, and you should consider this amazing awesomeness the next time you are thinking about purchasing a guitar plugin. One thing I want to note on using impulse responses in NAM is the following. By the time of filming this, we got version 0.7.0. In case you have run on this version or a previous version, when you load an impulse response, the output is getting excessively loud. You wanna dime that output gain by minus 10 or even minus 15 dB in order to not get into clipping territory. That's absolutely crucial for evaluating if the model which you wanna try out and the impulse response together sound actually good or not because it will make a night and day difference. My IRs do not work. Why is that so? Loading up some specific impulse responses to NAM might end up in error messages, like this one or like this one. In case you get these issues, what you can always try to mitigate these issues is load the impulse response, since it's a WAV file, right up into your DAW and export this as a PCM WAV file in mono and at 48 kilohertz and you eventually might be good to go already. I have ideas to make NAM even better. That's great, and I'm glad you like NAM. Now, the best way to contribute ideas is to head to the official GitHub page for NAM, and then in the issue section, enter your idea. This section is overlooked by Steve from time to time, and he then can prioritize what's next on the list based on the inputs given there. All right, everybody, let's wrap up this video because I think that we have covered most of the ground. We answered a lot of the commonly asked questions within the Facebook NAM community group over here. If you still have further comments or questions, of course, leave them down below as comments under this video. I'm trying to engage with as many people as possible down below in the comment section. And also check out the links in the video description below because there's a ton of information out there on how to do training, where to find NAM, and so on and so forth. Thank you for sticking through this video. Thank you everybody for watching my videos and helping out the channel. It means a ton to me. If you dig what I'm doing, I would be super appreciative if you could like and subscribe this video. It helps the channel out. It shows that I'm doing something right over here and thank you so, so much. All right, we're gonna see each other in the next video and until then, keep it metal.